we'll begin by interfacing our pocket flaps that are going on top of the pockets, the chest pockets and the sleeve pockets. You're going to want to make sure that there is a mirror of these. Next we have the cuffs. You'll cut four of these and two will get interfacing. We use a fusible interfacing that we can iron on. Next you'll have the zipper facing. This you'll need to interface very specifically because it sits on the right front and faces with the short end out. So you'll need to make sure that the one on the bottom here that is shown is the one that gets interfaced. The other one does not need it. Up next we have the collar. You'll cut two of these on the fold of the fabric and interface one of them. And then we have our bottom bands. There is a right front band and a left front band and then a back band. Each one is marked for the darts on the front and also for the center fronts and where to fold for the zipper. You just want to make sure that you use a warm iron with a little bit of steam to activate the glue on the back of the fusible interfacing so it'll stick. Also, you can make little slits with your scissors to note where the notches should be. This is the most effective way I have found to do it. Here we'll be thread tracing these darts. This is a method of doing a dart all through the layers at once so that you can make sure the dart is exactly where you want it. You take a little needle and a length of thread long enough to go through both these darts. And we're just gonna poke it straight through the plus sign here, through all the layers, the pattern included, and just pull it all the way through. You're gonna keep pulling until you give yourself a tail and then we're gonna make sure that we have a little bit of excess. Now I'm gonna carefully separate these pattern pieces and cut apart the threads after I make sure there's enough of a tail. If there were just one dart, we could just stop here and get rid of the pattern, but there are two, so we're gonna do the other one as well. This way both are marked exactly as they're supposed to be and you don't have to worry about it too much. If there is a second dart like there is here, just make sure you line everything back up and repeat the process. You'll notice I cut two left fronts. It's easier to do that than cut a little off the right front to match the pattern piece. And now our darts are marked. 
and we can finish the leather markings. I use a ruler and a pencil for this because I've interfaced the entire fronts. I've cut slits for the darts at the bottom of the hemline here, and we're going to just connect the dots from the point of the dart all the way to the leg. I'm using pencil here, you can use chalk, whatever works for you. Now this is a double chest dart here. This is kind of silly because it takes one big dart and makes it into two. It just adds a little bit more finesse in the shaping. Okay, so this is our right front and you'll see that I've cut down just a little bit to match the right front pattern piece from the second left front that I uh, cut before. You can see this is where I cut off a little bit of excess. We don't need that on the right front. So here are our two fronts lined up with their pattern pieces. You can see that they are both different across the front edges. For our chest pockets, we're gonna make a pleat down the center of each one. And to do that, we're gonna use the pattern piece to inform where we need to make some little snips in the edges here to mark where we're gonna fold. So a slit for the outside and then the inside one. And you'll repeat that for both sides, and I'm cutting through both chest pockets at the same time. You don't need to interface this particular part as it acts like a working pocket and doesn't need a lot of structure. Okay, so now that we've marked where our pleats need to be, we're going to fold these pleats together and we're going to do that by putting right sides together, right down the middle of those two marks and making those marks meet. Just like so. I'm using a broadcloth here, which is fairly thin. It's made out of 100% cotton. It's easy to finger press and so I do that here. Keep making sure that those slits are lined up. And this is the inside fold of our pleat. Next, we're gonna take that inmost uh, slit and we're gonna fold it with wrong sides together and then line it back up with the fold we just made. those slits aligned and again finger press this into place give it a pin or two just to kind of hold it you can see it's like a half inch pleat that we've folded to the outside you'll note that I based it around the edge of the pocket and that helps to keep the edges from stretching or doing anything funky while we're working with them So now we're going to do the other pleat. We're going to do the same process all over again. Align the notches. Give it a good finger press. If you're working with a heavier fabric, this one might be a little harder to do. You may use a couple of straight pins to kind of help you along the way. It's easy to get pretty confused. Sometimes it seems like you should do it the same way, but that is in fact wrong. And then I realized it and we turn it around. So we're gonna take that notch on the inside with wrong sides together, 
match the notches back up and give it a pin. Once you've got these pinned, you'll want to give them a good press. And you can baste over the top of this if you want to, but it's important not to at this moment. And then we have both chest pockets ready to go. Next, we'll make some casing for the pocket flaps. And to do that, you have an inch and a half wide bias. Or in this case, it's on the grain. And I've sewn the end just so it'll help me turn it right side out. And this is a quarter inch seam down the side. You want enough room to stick up a nice thick straw down the middle and a skewer with the sharp end cut off to help you turn it right side out. I recently learned this trick and it is my favorite by far in order to get this done and get it done quickly. It's a lot less frustrating than other methods that I've tried. So you thread the straw all the way through until you get to that sewn end. We're gonna end up cutting that off, but for right now it's gonna help us. And then you use a skewer, you stick it in the straw, and push. And it starts to turn right side out. When you get to the point where your skewer is about to go away and this gets bunched up like this, you can get the end of your straw and use the straw to push it the way out. This is annoying when you do try to do it by hand, but you use a straw and it turns right out. And then you just shake your skewer out of the casing. Okay, now that we've got our casing, we're gonna try to roll that edge into the middle. You can try to turn this out if you wanna use the finished edge, but in this case, because we're moving where the seam lays, instead of on the side, it's gonna be in the middle, we're gonna cut that end off. Here, now that the casing is complete, I'm gonna try and take this seam that runs down the side and roll it into the middle. I'm really using my fingers to kind of feel the seam allowance. We snip off this tip because we're not gonna use it the way that it was sewn, so we're gonna to have to finish it by hand later. But here we just roll the seam straight into the middle and then give it a good finger press. And then when you're done and you have it where you want it, press it with a steam iron. So here we can see we have a nice casing, our seam is in the middle, the other side looks good, we're going to give this an edge stitch. And then when we're ready to put it on our pocket, we're going to use just a little bit, but I cut it a bit at a time. So here I've sewn along either edge and a narrow hem, and there are markings on the pocket pattern for where the uh, casing will go. And when you fold the pattern together, what's going to happen is we're going to cut a little piece that's just a little bit longer than our pleat so that we can tuck it into the fold that the pleat creates and sew it down. So to orient that on my pattern, I just kind of line up my pattern to get an orientation just so I know about where I need to mark or pin the casing. And I'm going to make sure this comes over the edge of the pleat just a little bit so that I can tuck it just into the fold beneath that. So here again, just a little bit more in frame. We have a chest pocket and we're putting a little bit of casing on to act as a clasp for the pocket flap. I'm using my pattern to help orient me and tell me kind of inform where I want to put that casing. 
and then you'll see it overlaps the pleat by just a little bit on either side. I want to tuck those ends into the pleat fold. This is a little fiddly, so take your time and use a lot of pins. What's important is you want to make sure that that casing comes all the way to the edge of the fold. And now this is kind of a tricky part because what we want to do is we want to capture that end in the fold without getting the rest of the pleat. And we're going to sew that down here in a moment. So here now what I'm trying to do is isolate that little end into its pleat fold without making it shorter. So I've kind of held it in place and now I'm putting another pin through it so that I can just sew along the edge and just catch that little edge of the casing. So here we've sewn the one side. You can see I put a very narrow hem on that and it just caught the little pleat uh, casing in its path. And now we're gonna do that for the other side, but we wanna make sure that the casing isn't pulling across the pleat and making it like a weird gather point. So we fold that over and the other one is pinned into place to kind of help keep the ease where it needs to be. And so now I'm gonna kind of carefully switch where the pin's at. Making sure I've got it caught in the pleat fold where I want it. If I open it back up, you can see this is where it should be. It's really important to fold that pleat because it takes more surface area to go around it than you would think. If I did it straight from here, it would be a little puckered, but we're going to go for that. Pin to secure and then sew that edge. Alright, both the ends are secure. We're going to fold our pleat back the way it needs to go. And we're not going to secure the front of the pleat in the same way that we did the pleat back. We need that to kind of appear to be perfectly pleated without any stitching. So we're going to fold it back up. And then I do a quick basting stitch just across the pleat to hold it down and in place. Here I'm going to pin it down again before I do that just to make sure that nothing moves on me. When you are sewing, never, 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 never roll over your straight pins. Always remove them before the needle gets there. Even if your needle doesn't break, it will dull and will cause problems with your project. So here I've secured both of those pleats and then I've rolled a narrow hem here at the top. It's a 5 8 inch seam allowance where I've just tucked in the extra little bit underneath. And here's how I do that. I just roll the seam allowance. The stay stitching on the outside helps give me a guide. And then I roll this together, pin to secure. Now I'm placing my pins lengthwise here only because it's such a narrow space to do that the other direction. You can kind of choose what works for you, but when you're sewing in the machine, make sure that you're always removing the pin before it gets to the needle.
You don't have to finesse this too much. This is gonna end up being the top of the pocket edge and you won't see it much as the pocket remains closed most of the time. Here I've started the edges of the pocket and I'm gonna use that stay stitching I had put in a lot earlier to kind of finger fold here, finger press the edges of the seam allowance underneath. We're gonna end up applying this to the front of the jacket and so this finished edge is important to make sure it doesn't snag. You can use a zigzag stitch if you don't have access to a serger or pinking shears work just as well. Fold under your edges. You can use an iron to do this if your fabric is a little more stubborn and resists the finger pressing. And then here as I come to the corners, I corner them out at right angles just as you normally would. But then what's going to happen is we're going to fold the corner just a little differently, kind of like origami. We're going to fold it out like so, so that I end up with two little triangles or like a napkin fold really in that corner. Now that could be a right angle if you want to read it a right angle or you can press it a little further inward to create a miter. So here I've kind of established where that corner should be and now I'm just going to use my thumb to kind of press the corner and those edges together so that they nest very nicely. And so now I'm creating that miter. I'm just going to pull the corner inward until I'm happy with the angle and finger press it into place until I'm quite pleased with where it's at. You can check it from time to time and then when you're happy with where it's at, throw a pin in it to hold it. And see this is where the corner would be versus where it is. Now this is just a decorative touch. You don't have to do that. You can definitely use those squared corners. It's a little easier. I like this though. It's a way of recreating a curve without really needing to be a curve. Again, we establish the right corner. And then I just use my finger to kind of press that corner down until that miter matches the other corner. You can use your fingers like this, whatever works. It's fiddly nonetheless. Just take your time and don't be afraid to keep doing it. Okay, we've pinned that corner. And now I'm just gonna finger press the rest of the seam allowance to the back, the inside of the pocket. and use some more straight pins to kind of help keep it where I want it. I really don't want that pleat to move, so I'm using two straight pins here to make sure that the pleat doesn't go anywhere. finished pocket. Okay, for the pocket flaps on the chest pockets that we were just working on, I'm going to make a little slit here for where the casing is going to go as the uh, pocket tab. And then here I've interfaced the whole thing and we're going to fold it in half and give it a good press. You want to do this wrong sides together first and you want to give it a steam press. Um, that's always going to give you the best results. But here we're going to start with just a light finger pressing to give me the mid line of that, those, both of those pocket flaps. So now to join the casing, I've just taken the whole casing and without cutting it and I've secured it to the one side of the pocket flap. I'm going to snip it pretty much as long as the pocket flap it is itself. And then we're gonna leave that on the inside. You can see I gave it a press and I'm gonna fold it right sides together. 
And keep in mind we're going to need to turn this right side out again, so you're going to need to leave yourself an opening, but what we're going to do here is match everything up, give it a good pin, and then sew around the edge and leave a little bit open on either side of the casing to turn inward and face the inside and then we'll be finishing the seam with a top stitch but here for now pin around and here I'm going to establish where I want it to turn around so you can do this on the end you can do this over the casing like I mentioned but it however it works for you so here I've done both the corners. You want to at least make sure whether you do it over the casing or in the corner like here that you've gone past the corners. And then snip off those corners. Always be a little steeper than you think it needs so that when you turn it right side out, it will lay flat. And then don't forget to cut these upper corners as well because they get turned inside too. This last corner, I'm gonna go ahead and snip before we do anything with it. You can kind of snip it a little short of where the seam allowance is and it still does its job. So here we're gonna turn this right side out and usually I like to start with the corners. When I did a second set of these, I ended up doing my opening over the casing the second time and felt a lot better with that other than doing this end. But again, it's all about what you are most comfortable with. So either way works, whichever method is good for you, use it. And then you can kind of use the casing to help pull it to the right side. But once you do, you're going to use your fingers to roll those uh, seams out flat as you can. You want to make sure you... Uh, get them as flat as you can. I use my stunted skewer from before to help me push out the corners when I can't reach inside there with a finger. Don't use your scissors because if you do you'll puncture through your seam and create a hole or you'll punch out some of the frayed edges. We don't want that. So here because it was the end I'm gonna fold it in and again I cut that a little short so I'm gonna make sure that that edge goes all the way to the corner and then we're gonna give this a good press. Okay, so here I've edge stitched around the edges to close the thing, and now we need to finish the little casing. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna roll it up real nice and neat. You don't need a lot. You're pretty much working with just about a quarter inch here. So you roll up about an eighth, you roll it up again another eighth, and then you're gonna use a few quick hand stitches to sew this shut. And make sure that your thread doesn't show through to the front of the casing. It's just a little added touch and tailoring that makes it nice. It's the nice little invisible stitch, but you don't need a lot here. You just need to grab a few threads to make sure that it stays closed. This is quite fiddly and little, so take your time. It's always good practice. When I'm hand sewing, I leave a tail long enough to tie my knot back to, basically creating a big loop. There are other methods to do that, whatever works best for you. I'm just grabbing a few threads underneath the edge stitching to help secure it. And then we're just gonna whip stitch this real quick. You don't need a very long length of thread, just enough to get you just those few stitches, but make sure you catch the whole edge and that it's secure.
Once I've gone across, I go back the other direction. Then when you're finished and you're happy with your stitches, you use that tail that you left for yourself and make a tidy little knot and cut off the ends. Don't pull too tightly, you will gather your stitches. And then we have a finished chest pocket flap. You can see that the edge is finished. There are no stitches on the front that we don't want to see. And it's nice and clean. For the sleeve pocket flap, we're going to do the same thing, just making sure we turn all the corners. Trim those corners before you turn it right side out. And again, we need to make sure that these are mirrors of each other, so interfacing them will have helped keep track of that. And I do always clip those corners a lot steeper than they need, because they need the room. So we're going to turn this right side out. I press my seam allowance down while it's this way because it kind of helps when you turn it right side out again to stay where you want it. And now these are really little, so do your best to turn them out. I, of course, will use my skewer to help get those tight corners. You can use your fingers, whatever works as long as it's not sharp. I'm using my scissors here. This is a taboo, but on these tiny corners, my scissors are somewhat blunt, so it's not too bad. Once you get this all turned out, you use your fingertips to kind of roll those seams out flat as you can. Give it a good finger press and good iron press and then we'll stitch around the outside. So here for the sleeve pocket, it's not too difficult. There's no pleats or anything. So we've finished the edges and we're gonna roll hem the top of the sleeve edge. This is the notched edge of the sleeve, denotes the top. This is a lot easier to do without a pleat involved. It lays a lot nicer and flatter and it goes a lot quicker because it's a little shorter. But you can see the other pocket is there on the mat already folded and done with its little pocket flap. When we're done, we're going to end up with something that looks like this with a topped finished hem and is all folded in ready to be sewn onto something. So here, just like for the chest pocket, I'm folding along my stay stitching 
using it as my guide. And for these particular sleeve pockets, we're not going to round these edges, so I'm going to use the right angle edges of the corners for these ones. Same as for the chest pocket, we're just going to origami these corners into place like so and give it a quick pin. So here we have our marked darts. We're gonna start to sew these here in a moment. But first I'm gonna take a pin and I'm gonna stick it straight through this point. And that's gonna help me establish where the point needs to be. So then we're going to match up these little notches, folding the dart in half with right sides together. And once you get those to meet up, you wanna use a pin to hold it together here at the bottom and then at the narrow top of the dart I'm going to replace my pin here and then we're going to just fold this in half using the pin to help us establish where that point is. Now this is a really narrow dart when you do any kinds of darts normally the legs are maybe just a little bit wider but here we have really super narrow darts so you don't have to worry too hard about matching it up perfectly the pocket is going to end up uh, going over these two darts but until then we're going to use a pin to kind of help orient and i'm checking the other side to make sure you can roll this around and again these are super narrow so they don't have to be absolutely perfect just as close as you can manage just another pin and then we'll sew the dart. Now you want to sew the dart from the bottom to the point and leave a thread tail at the end to tie a knot into to establish the dart. So here we are, I've left a thread tail and here I'm going to tie it in a knot. You can backstitch over this too, but in order to make the dart a little less crisp, you can do this method as well. And then once you've tied your knot, just cut off the extra edges. You don't even really need to since these are gonna be inside a lining. There we have a dart. And so we'll repeat the same process for the second dart. And these darts will get pressed towards the center front. And here's the right side. Here I've sewn both darts. We're gonna use the pattern piece, which won't match up quite right anymore, but we're gonna use that front corner to help mark where we wanna place our pocket. Now this is a, along the yoke line. If you use a yoked version here, since there's no yoke, we're just gonna draw a quick line and I'm gonna use that to help me orient my pocket. Now your pocket should match up to about middle. You want it really close to that armhole and one of the pocket pleats should be about midway through or in the middle of those two darts. So then I'll just re-enter it, like just fuss with this for a minute and then pin it through all the layers so it stays put where I want to have it.
Once you have the pocket in place, you're going to sew around the edge with a narrow hem, leaving the top half open because it's a pocket. And then with our pocket flap, we're gonna start to position this. This should be just slightly wider than your pocket, but if it isn't, you can adjust the pocket sides at the top to make sure that they fall just under the pocket flap. And then we'll sew that into place as well. Here I'm gonna pin the pocket flap exactly where I want it. It's about a little over an eighth of an inch higher than the pocket. It needs to be pretty close to that pocket opening in order to lay flat and look correct. There is a little bit of a bubble from the darts. You can kind of work around that. It's pretty narrow, but it's still a bubble. So just smooth it out as best you can. Note I'm just pinning across the top of the flap because all we're gonna sew is straight across. Here's a finished pocket. Everything's nice and sewn down. It's a workable pocket. Nice and crisp. Here I've positioned the other pocket on the left front. In order to orient yourself, I like to line these up. I have folded back the fold for the overlap that's going to cover the zipper. And here I want to make sure that my pockets are in line with each other and that they're squared. As with the other pocket, you can make sure you can roll these corners up here at these upper edges in a little bit just to make sure that they fall under the flap. And then we're going to sew around this other pocket. And here's my flap. You'll notice there's just a slight trapezoidal shape to that pocket and that's because I ended up having to fold open or inward that edge just a little bit to make sure it fell underneath the pocket flap. Here, because the pocket flap goes over that trapezoid shape, it actually corrects the square for us. So it's an illusion um, that makes it look exactly like a square, but not quite. Moving ahead, we have the back of our jacket. I have interfaced the back. Because I'm using a broadcloth here, I needed to make it a little bit more thick um, structurally, and so I've added interfacing to the back. If you're using a heavier, it doesn't matter as much, but you should still interface around the armholes and the neckline, regardless of the weight of your fabric. Here I am pinning the back band, which is also interfaced, to the back. There is a slight curve to the back to add to the waist shaping, and so here you're gonna make sure that you just follow that curve, just ever so slightly. Pin everything into place, and then sew on the bands. Something I do pretty frequently is I use my hands to ease the allowance between two different sides of fabric that I'm sewing together. I am frequently using my last three fingers on my left hand to help me do that. I grab the fabric and I pinch it with those fingers behind against the meat of my palm to help me make sure that all the fullness, if there is any, gets worked into the other side.
Now that the band has been sewn, you're gonna press that to the side where it faces the band. We want that seam to go downwards. Here we have the band for the left front. We have the markings for the darts that should line up. And this should also just extend as far as the left front does. If your markings don't quite match, that's okay. You can just do the edges first. So match up either corner and then ease the fullness of one side into the other using your hands and some straight pins to hold it in place before you sew. I'm not sure what happened with this band, but it ended up about a quarter inch too short. That's okay. You can ease some of that fullness later when you put the bands together, as long as you remember that it's short. And I can readjust along the other hemline to kind of ease some of that extra length away. So we've sewn the band onto the left front. I've repressed that front so that now the band matches it as well. Everything's nice and crisp. Again, the seam allowance should be pressed down towards the band. This is the right front. It has a much shallower fold than the left front. And we're just gonna do the same process. We're gonna line up the edges first and worry about the notches second. Sometimes your darts move around a little bit and that's okay. Those things happen. What you really wanna do to get a professional finished look is to make sure that those edges match and that when you ease them together, there is no gathers or folds where there shouldn't be. Here you see me readjusting a dart just a little bit at that edge so that I can work some fullness out of the band. Here's the zipper facing. We're going to start by sewing around the outside edge, leaving the longest edge open. Here, I'm just gonna use a few straight pins to hold things together. Remember, never sew over your pins. Even if your machine doesn't, like the needle doesn't hit the pin, or if it doesn't break, if it does hit a pin, it will dull your needle and it will screw up your work over the course of time. And so you'll get a lot less life out of your sewing needles that way. Here, I've sewn around the edge. Again, we have some corners to trim. And on this, because we're turning it right side out and it's gonna become a facing, I'm gonna grade the seam as well. So here I trim the corners, always a little deeper than they need so that they lay nice and flat and don't overlap each other. And then by grading a seam, what I mean is we're gonna take one half of the seam allowance, the half that's not interfaced, and we're gonna trim it down to about a quarter inch And once we do this and turn it right side out, it should help that seam lay a lot flatter and not be as evident through the top layer. This doesn't also have to be very perfect. It just needs to be trimmed down so that it's not um, creating a big bulk of a layer. So then we turn this right side out and I use my fingertips to turn corners. 
when they're accessible like this. You don't have to have fingernails in order to do this, but it helps to just throw your finger in there. So I put my thumb up into the corner and push it through. And it comes out pretty flat. Here we're gonna iron this, give this a good press, and then it's gonna get some top stitching around the edge that we've just sewn. The interfaced side will always be harder to fold than the uninterfaced side, that's okay. Just do your best. Now we're gonna top stitch and baste the open edge of the zipper facing. Here we've top stitched around the edge and there's a basting stitch holding the layers together. And our narrow top edge. So we're gonna baste along the neckline of this right front and the front edge and then fold along that basting stitch and give it a good press and this is gonna be what we line our zipper up to. This is an inset zipper or a lapped zipper and it's got a really deep lap and so what we're doing is we're creating a space for the zipper to sit where you can't see it from the outside of the jacket. So this is about a half inch outward from where center front is. On the right front and on the left front, it's about an inch and a half. Here's our zipper facing that we just completed. And to line up the zipper facing, you wanna allow it to have just a little bit of space below the neck collar line. So that's why I based the neckline there is to kind of give me a uh, guide. And then line up those seam allowance edges and you should end up with about a seam allowance at the bottom of the band as well. So centered on that right front, make sure to leave yourself room for a seam allowance on those edges. Here's my zipper. I have a zipper that's way too long for my jacket, but that's not an impediment in the slightest. Since it's a separating zipper, we're going to end up cutting off the top. And so I line the zipper up a little bit above the zipper facing. I don't want it to meet the very end. I want it to kind of sit just above or in line with that top stitching. And then I use the edge to line up the zipper tape. You don't want it directly against the teeth because the zipper pull will need to move. So you need to line that up with about an eighth inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch space between the edge of the fold and the teeth. While you're sewing, this is going to get narrower, and so err on the side of a larger gap. Here I'm opening up the zipper and getting rid of the half I don't need. So one thing I like to use is this double-sided mounting tape for photographs. It's a rubber-based um, adhesive, and I love using it for zippers. This is one of these little sewing hacks that I've picked up over the course of my career that have really, really made zippers a step easier. Now you can remove this tape after you're done sewing the zipper because we don't actually sew through it. It will gum up your needle, but it can easily wash out when you're done and it's not a problem. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't add any markings. If you iron over it, it's wonderful. I use this in place of pins most often on zippers because pins will buckle the zipper and make for an uneven sew. So here, like I had the edge fold over, we're gonna line it back up to where we had it here in a moment. Make sure that fold is exactly where you want it. I make a little mark with my chalk pencil to make sure that it's no shorter than I want it to be. And then I peel off this backing. The glory of this tape is that It'll stick to the fabric, but you can reposition frequently. So as long as it 
keeps its stick pretty well through repositioning. This is a fiddly part, so just take your time and don't be afraid to do it over again. I'm giving that a good press so that the adhesive sticks to the seam allowance. I'm gonna move the zipper pull out of my way and flip this out and see now my zipper tape is stuck to my seam allowance right where I need it to be. We're gonna sandwich that zipper right in between the zipper facing and the edge of the jacket that it's stuck to right now. And you can use pins, just make sure you're not pinning straight through your tape. So here we're sandwiching that zipper between the zipper facing and the shirt jacket. And here I'm pinning the long way next to the teeth of the zipper. Now since I'm going to be removing my pins immediately before sewing, I'll avoid any of the buckles that I mentioned before, but this is really just, you should never really sew in line with your pins. You always want them to be perpendicular, but in this case, there's always something that makes you put your pins a different direction. So here I put them in this direction just to make sure that I'm avoiding major buckles, but this is just here to keep the facing in line with the rest. So then we're gonna sew this seam again and fold it out and here we have a nice clean edge. So our zipper is in with its facing and the zipper is closed and we see that we have some space between the zipper teeth and the fold so that the zipper pull can move freely. So I'm going to place the left front over top of the right front to kind of orient myself. And the first time I did this, I actually did it wrong. You can see my incorrect stitches there still, but now I'm fixing it. So what we're doing and mistakes happen. So just let them happen. Just move backward when you need to. It's fine. Here I'm using more tape. I'm going to do the other side. You don't need more tape than the length of the zipper you're using, really. Um, my zipper is obviously way long and we'll address that here in a moment. And I stop just kind of just short of the edge of the tape. And one thing to keep in mind is that the center front for the left front is about a half inch inward towards the pocket on that side as well. And so there is quite an overlap here. So I'm matching up those top notches making sure that the band seams are in line and don't be afraid to reposition this as you need to. There is a slight curve to the fronts because of the darts that we've put in, so move it around as much as you need to get it straight, press it into place, make sure it sticks, and then fold out that left side and with the zipper together we're going to stitch just along this edge. There is a little excess fabric on the left fronts. I've done this on purpose to act as an inside facing. Now before you sew the second half of the zipper, make sure you pin the zipper facing out of your way. Otherwise you will sew through all those layers and actually effectively sew your jacket shut down the front. We don't want that. So we're gonna pin this out of the way and then sew along the tape here. So here's the top of my zipper. I've actually folded these out not the right way. These actually shouldn't overlap this way, but what you can do if you do it like I've done it here is just sew across here. You want, these are what would be the stringer, but we've cut our zipper a little short. So I just sew those ends down. I basically just wanna make sure that my zipper pull isn't gonna pull off the zipper inadvertently.
These upper teeth are super bulky, so I ended up trimming them off. Be careful when you do this, because again, if you get too close to the zipper pull, it's possible that your zipper pull will just come right off. And don't do this to your scissors, I'm mean. Once you've completed the zipper, it's time to join the shoulder, shoulder seams. And here we're gonna press those open, as you see here. And make sure that the entire neckline has a stay stitch. So just like the zipper facing, we're gonna sew around the collar and trim these corners. Nice trimmed corner and you'll notice I stopped a little short of the seam allowance but we're gonna do the same thing again where we stick our thumb into the corner and use our fingers to press it out And just like the zipper facing, we're going to give this a good press. We're going to end up top stitching this collar, so an understitch isn't necessary. If you would like to avoid top stitching, you can understitch this. Just press out that seam as flat as you can get it. Make sure that it's all the way out and that there's not excess folded into the seam. So here I've top stitched and basted shut my collar just like I did for the zipper facing only this time I've added an extra line of top stitching. You can grade the seam allowance here you can kind of see my seam allowance sticking through if you don't grade the seam allowance that ends up a little bit more bulky. Here we have a finished collar piece. Next, we're gonna start to add our collar to our neckline. And to do that, and this is why the stay stitching around the neckline is so important, we're gonna clip around the curve of the neckline about every half inch, especially around these sections where it's curved, not right on the seam line, but around it. And this is something that helps ease a curve into an opposing curve. So these necklines are super curvy and the collars are sometimes very straight and this helps to make sure that you can get the seam lines to match up properly. Now the reason we do this is because that inner curve at the very edge of the seam is a lot shorter than where the seam edge actually is. And so this allows for that to spread open where we need it to without affecting the seam line. So here you want to make sure that the interfaced side of the collar is the one that gets is treated like the right side. And you're going to match up the center back first, then the front edges, and then ease all the rest of the fullness into the collar. Some patterns will mark where the side seam is supposed to fall on a collar. In this case, I like to kind of fudge that and I ignore that marking in favor of making sure that the collar is evenly distributed between the front and the back.
this color doesn't come straight all the way to the edge of the jacket. There is a small gap in the front, so just make sure you allow for some of that. It's going to be away from where the zipper is. Just use some straight pins to kind of hold that in place until you can sew. It doesn't matter whether you sew with the collar on top or with this um, slashed edge on top, just that it lays flat and that you don't have any buckles or gathers in the seam line. This is a really good example of, again, how I use my left hand and my last three fingers in the meat of my palm to hold things together while I work with my thumb and forefinger. Just pinning into place. And note, even though that seam line is slashed, the actual seam where we've stay stitched is not moving, it's flat. And just futz with this until it gets to the point where you are happy. You can use as many pins as you want, honestly. There's no rule about how many pins or how less pins to use. It's really all about making sure you just remove them before you sew over them. Okay, so now I've sewn the neck edge, the collar is on. And this collar is actually going to go downwards into the body. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna follow our slashes from the neck edge and we're gonna slash open the collar into the seam allowance just a little bit. This will help it to lay flatter along the neck and shoulder line especially since this is going to get trapped underneath the lining. The reason I don't do this before I sew the seam is because that's just one extra thing to deal with, so it's a little easier to come back after it's sewn and make these clips. Now again, this is something with the zipper that I had to go back and fix later. So here I had to make a clip at the edge of the collar so that I could flip the rest of the seam allowance out without affecting the collar. And here I made that clip just shy of the stitching, but that was so I could keep this little edge out and flip the rest in. Now again, like I said, I did the zipper a little differently and ended up having to go back and fix this piece later. So uh, avoid my mistake. Once the zipper's done, you're gonna sew the side seam together, press the seam open, make sure that the, the bands match. Look at this blessed seam. Sometimes things come out so pretty, so good. Setting the body aside, we're gonna work on the sleeves. And just as we did for the body, we're going to thread mark these darts on both the sleeves at the same time. Again, I've interfaced these sleeves uh, because I'm working with a thinner broadcloth, 
and I wanted to make it sure that it was good and crisp. So here I'm thread marking this dart and there is both a dart and a vent to help narrow the cuff area on this sleeve without losing any fullness at the top. So I'm going to get rid of my pattern here and now I very much have the point of both darts beautifully marked simply and easily without making any actual marks on the fabric. And again, just like we did for the fronts, I'm going to mark the legs of the dart with my ruler and a pencil. I like using a pencil over this interfacing because it doesn't show through to the front and it washes out and you never see it again. Um, but in most cases, you should probably use Taylor's chalk, which brushes away nice and easily. Make sure to repeat the process for the other sleeve as well. Here we're marking the space where the cuff and the cuff vent are going to stop. And also the markings across the, the top of the cap of the sleeve and the sides. You're actually going to wait to sew the dart for quite some time. You just need to mark it ahead of time. This is the under sleeve. And we're going to do the same thing we did for the upper sleeve and just make sure that we're marking which is front and which is back. Again, that cuff vent is important because we're going to stop sewing at that point to make sure that there's a vent. So this is my mock-up for this jacket. You can see I have some top stitching on just the top half of the sleeve here, and then there's the cuff and the vent and the sleeve pocket. So what we need to do is the top stitching and the sleeve pocket first. So here we are. Here's the flap and the pocket is a workable pocket. And you can see that those are sewn on in line with the top stitching. Now, because this is my mock-up, this isn't exactly like we had it, but again, we want to make sure that those are all lined up. Here you can see the underside of the sleeve, where it fits through the armhole and is otherwise blank. but the top stitching, if it continued, would match up. This is the back half of the sleeve where the vent and the cuff are. You can see that the cuff overlaps from the front to the back and that there is a little bit of extra on the cuff to make sure that there's a nice flat overlap. Now to get there, if you want that top stitching, again, we're gonna line this up with our pattern piece and I'm gonna use that bicep line as my marker. I 
I just fold the pattern piece along that line and use it to trace a quick chalk line. You can use your ruler for added accuracy if you want to. I have these big fatty chalk pencils I like to use, but Taylor's chalk of any variety is usually pretty good. Always use white. Blue and pink don't come off as easily. Yellow can be helpful, uh, but generally speaking, white still shows up even on the lighter fabrics. So here I've established a guideline for that bicep line that's gonna be the very top, top stitching that I do. Now here I use the pocket also as a guideline because I know that I want to have it at a certain spot in terms of where my top stitching goes. And I make a little X mark for the front of the sleeve so I can remember which way my pocket flap needs to go. There is one miter on the side that looks a little deeper than the other and so these are different shapes and should mirror each other. But that deeper angled one should be spacing front and it's going to fall over that top stitching line and these top stitching lines are about a quarter inch apart you can play around with them make them further apart if you want to so long as they cover that sleeve pocket if you add it To center the sleeve pocket, I fold the sleeve in half here. I don't want to give a huge press, just enough to kind of give me a middle guideline so I know where to center the pocket. And then I'm going to line it up with my chalk line that's going to be my top stitch. Now just be careful and don't top stitch through the edge of your pocket that's supposed to open unless you want a decorative pocket that doesn't work. These edges are squared, so just like the other pockets, we're just going to reposition until we're happy and pin into place. So here I've sewn on the sleeve pocket and I haven't quite done this, the other top stitching yet but I'm going to use the pocket sewn on as my guide. So now I'm going to line up the rest of my top stitch lines with the top stitch on the edge of the sleeve here, or the sleeve pocket rather. And this is just so I can make sure everything comes out the way that I want it to. You don't have to do it in this order, whatever method works for you. I've spaced these quarter inch top stitch lines about an inch apart. One of my very favorite tools is this ruler, which is a quilting ruler with the angles on it and it's clear and see-through. and. So we've marked out all of our top stitch lines. We're gonna go back and top stitch these pieces. Our flap here is gonna go at the top of the top stitching line and be in line with the top stitching there as well. And so we're gonna kill two birds with one stone and sew those at the same time. Everything is sewn on, the top stitching is done. We're ready to move on with the rest of the sleeve. 
So now you can take the bottom half of your sleeve and you want to make sure that it's aligned with the front first. You want to do the vent half second. And again, just as before, you want to make sure that that lines up at the top here with the seam edge and not the actual corner. Sometimes, like I'm doing here, you need to readjust for some fullness. Just remove pins until it's nice and flat, and then sew the seam. I double check sometimes that, that seam edge is going to be exactly where I want it. And then sew. Here is the seam all sewn. We've pressed it open so it's nice and crisp. And now we're going to connect it to the back half. You can trim these off. That's not really necessary. I'm just weird about it. Okay, so you're gonna fold this back in half and do the dart. Now this has a handy dandy little notch. You can use the pin method here. This one is a wider dart, so it doesn't make it as difficult. And then sew that dart always from the bottom of the dart to the point, leaving a little thread tail to knot at the end. Okay, so here I've sewn the dart and we're actually going to press it away from the seam that we did on the front. We want it to face the back half of the sleeve. And it gives us a slight curve to the sleeve now. You can see this is where the cuff will go. It's really easy to get the cuffs mixed up. So make sure that you mark each cuff the way that you want to make sure that you keep them straight because they do need to be a mirror of each other and I got caught on that quite frequently. The vent is gonna be on the one side and like I said, it's very easy to get confused on which way goes which. Just like on the other things, I'm gonna mark my ends And this is like a stop stitching line. This is just a guide to help me keep track. Similar to the collar, I have sewn one of the cuffs here and I have stopped at that slitted mark. So around the edge and around both corners there at that cuff edge. I'm going to repeat these steps for the sleeve lining just as you did for the outer sleeve and this is one of those weird situations where you do the sleeve lining before you do the lining for anything else.
So I have the lining together and I'm about to sew the backs of these sleeves. Your lining should somewhat mirror what you're doing. But here we're gonna stop sewing at the vent like so and press the rest of the seam open. I'm gonna continue that slash cut into the dart, or sorry, not the dart, but the cuff vent because we want it to open. So we're gonna repeat that on the lining as well, just to the stitching, just shy of it. And then with right sides together, we're gonna put one sleeve inside the other. So we're gonna turn the main sleeve outright. And you can see I have my vent prepped here. And then I'm gonna take the lining, which is inside out, and nest the sleeve into itself here. And the rest of the stuff up here at the sleeve cap isn't as important as aligning the vent at the bottom right now, but you can get this all lined up so that it's all together. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these vent edges and we're gonna sew them together separately. So you're gonna sew one half together and then the other half, match up these edges throw a straight pin in there to hold it in place. And sew up to the vent mark. So here these vents are sewn. I'm going to trim the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch, just for the vent. And then here comes the tricky part. We're gonna turn the lining right side out. Then we're gonna turn it wrong side out and put it back into the sleeve. This should have the wrong sides together on the inside so that the finished side is on the lining and the outside. And we're gonna press these vent edges nice and flat. Now I'm using a poly liner here. You need to be careful with your iron that it's not too hot or it will burn and shrink your lining and you will have to do it over again. Now you can stitch these cuff edges, these vent edges, if you want to, but that's not necessary at the moment. And then here we have our cuff that we're gonna do next. So I've turned the cuff right side out. I've pressed the corners out with this little skewer. And give it a good press. Should end up with a shape that looks pretty much like this with one edge turned in and the other seam allowance sticking out. Here is a mirror of that same piece. I like to do both the cuffs at the same time so I can make sure they're mirrored. And now this is the funny part where I also get confused sometimes with my own work and I have to make sure, so this is the top of the sleeve and the front. So we wanna make sure that the front closes over the back and this is somewhat counterintuitive. So the blunt end of the cuff goes across the front like so. And make sure that the lining is all lined up too. You can base that edge if you want to, it's not necessary, but you'll notice that I'm matching up the folded edges first. I'll throw a pin in there.
then I come to the other edge. And this is a blunt edge, but you're still gonna match it up with the folded edge of the vent. Because what's gonna happen is that this edge is gonna get pushed into the cuff and you won't see it. So here I'm matching up those edges, throwing a pin in it. Make sure you don't pin through the under layer of the cuff. You don't want to sew through that. It's folded to kind of get it out of the way. And so now, ease the rest into the cuff. Use as many pins as you need to accomplish this task. If you have a free arm on your sewing machine, this makes this process a little easier. If you do not have a free arm, you just need to sew um, what I call backwards, which is where you sew with the curve away from the needle as opposed to towards it. It's always more important for your top layer to be nice and flat. If your under layer, your lining has a little bit of gathers in it at this point, that's not a big deal. Air on the side of your right side facing. So here we've sewn that cuff edge. You'll note that the this edge is out of the way. This will fold over like so and become a nice clean edge. But to get there, we're gonna stitch in the ditch to make sure that it stays. So I like to do this from the front. You wanna just barely catch the edge of the inside of the cuff in the ditch. And you can keep doing this until you're happy with it. I have to turn my pins around if they're facing the wrong direction sometimes. So again, I'm pinning in the stitching ditch, just barely catching the cuff edge underneath. Before you sew, you can double check that your cuff is the way that you want it, the vent, and the overlap, and the inside. All right, here we've sewn in the ditch of the cuff. It is secure. We have a nice finished vent edge.
I've top stitched around the outside of the cuff as well. And at the top of the sleeve, once you have the cuff together, you can nest the lining and line everything up and give it a quick basting stitch around all of its edges. So another method I use to trace darts, especially on something that's see-through, is I use this nice flat LED light board. I place my pattern underneath and my fabric over top so that I can see what I'm doing. Here I'm still thread tracing, but this way, again, the pattern is on the bottom instead of the top, and it's through a light board. This is more work than it needed to be. You can just do it the other way too, and it's just as effective. Whatever ends up working for you. Part of the right or the reason I like using the light board is because it has like a static effect. So with this poly lining, it held it in place and I didn't have to worry about it. So just like the fronts, we're going to make our darts. And in this thin stuff, the thread tracing actually works a lot better than a pin, in my opinion, but you're still gonna pin there. Again, it all comes down to what you're comfortable with as far as what you're working with fabric-wise. Don't be afraid to experiment and make mistakes because it is through mistakes that we learn It's important with thin fabrics, especially linings like this, that you don't over manipulate them. You want to keep them as flat as possible while you're working with them, if you can.
Okay, so we've sewn these darts. We're going to use the uninterfaced bands that we cut earlier. And this one is longer, but we're gonna cut that down. We're gonna add bands to the lining, just as we did for the front. So here I have my lining fronts with their bands. I have the lining back with its band. Everything is pressed towards the bands. And now just like for the fronts, we're gonna do the shoulder seams and the side seams. So here I've done that and you see I've pinned in the rest. You'll notice that there is some extra fabric underneath that zipper, and that is intentional. This acts as an extra facing, just a little bit more support behind that front section. One thing I do before committing to any sewing is pinning in the lining the way that it should be just to make sure that there's nothing weird happening, it's not pulling in any strange directions, that I see the seams as I expect and everything is the way I like. This is an extra step you don't have to take, but one that I like to just to make sure that things are going forward the way that I expect. Okay, so I've unpinned my lining. I've got some things, these things I need to fix. I was troubleshooting this as I was videotaping, and so this section is a little funky, but just bear with me here. The instructions are much more clear on how to actually do this section. I ended up doing a little more hand sewing than we needed to, and could have avoided this step by sewing the lining directly to these pieces. So with right sides together, we're going to match up the bottom bands, seam allowances first, outside edges, and then easing any fullness in between those spaces. Make sure your center backs are going to match. Okay, so when we get to this section of the lining, you'll notice that the zipper is farther back from the edge than the lining. And the lining needs to come in far enough to cover the zipper 
tape without covering the zipper teeth. So we're going to use that stitch line and this fold marker as a guide. Now you can do this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to sew just a little section here at the end that the, uh, the lining won't cover. And so it's like the span between these two pins. And then we're going to trim the corner and turn it right side out. Just like we did for the cuffs, you're going to end up with an angled piece. So here I've sewn that tiny little section. You can see it's right there. We're going to clip this corner. We're going to turn it around so that we can clip on the outside of the stitching and turn that corner. You'll need to do this at the top as well. And press it out. You can use your skewer or your uh, corner turn thing to get it out nice and nice and crisp. And then the rest of the seam should still stick out like so. And then the lining is going to sew in to that notch. So you keep lining up your bands. We're going to be sewing those bottom bands together. We're going to get to this corner. And just like we did for the cuffs on the sleeves, we're going to take that fold that we've created on the lining side and we're going to match it up to this seam. Now it's going to be a folded edge lined up to a blunt seam. That's perfectly fine. We're going to tuck that all in and you won't see it. So pin these together and then sew across that bottom edge. On this side with the other half of the zipper, you want to get the zipper pull out of your way. You want to fold in the seam allowance along the front edge and these seam allowances should just match. Okay, so we've sewn along the bottom edge of the lining and I've left the fronts open. You can choose to sew these together at the same time as you do this part, but it's a little bit more difficult to do. I like doing it this way even if it's hand sewing because it makes sense to me. Here I'm making sure that corner is nice and crisp because that's the outside bottom corner of our jacket. Up here at the neck edge, I've done the same treatment we did the first time when we've attached the collar. I've added some basting and clipped that curve. And then we're just going to match it up to the collar like we did before and re sew this seam. Now, like I said, you can sew the right front lining by tucking the zipper and the facing back to the inside and just sewing along that edge as well. You do need to be able to turn the jacket out so you leave the left front open to do so.
Sometimes you can use these little clips like I'm using on the corners, but generally speaking when you need to sew a seam you don't want to use clips to hold things together because they allow the uh, sides of the seam to slip against each other. Pins hold it in place. Now here, this is one of those funny, funny things. You'll notice that I have the zipper at a right angle as opposed to flipped over itself. This is a better method of doing this. It just makes it a little flatter. You don't have to cut off your teeth afterwards. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the zipper and I'm folding it down as if it's making a right angle turn and just pinning it out of the way so that it stays where I want it. Now I'm taking the lining, putting that over top, folding it just like the seam underneath it, and pinning it back into place. Now we want to use the same pin and make sure we're pinning through the zipper stringer as well. Just like so. The basting stitches at the neck edge also can act as a guide. You can just line them up and it'll give you a real good indication of where things go. Okay, so now we've sewn the lining into the neck edge as well. And I have these sides open. We're gonna turn it right side out. It's like opening a package. Shake everything out. And we're almost there, making good progress. So now what we've got a lining inside our jacket. We're gonna turn this back out so the lining is out to face us. Want to give the neck edge a good press. Make sure you're doing that from the outside and not over your lining. If you've noticed anything where you've messed up a section or you need to go back and correct a few stitches, do not hesitate to take out the seam ripper and just do it. You will spend more time agonizing over it than you will fixing it. We're going to line up these edges to the stitching. Now again, like I said before, you could have stitched this uh, with the sewing machine. I chose to hand sew it. That is entirely your choice. If you do choose to hand sew these sections, note that I'm using the stitch line as my guide marker and stitching or pinning in line with the direction of my stitches. In this case, because I'm not going to use the sewing machine, the direction of my pins is irrelevant. It's just whatever works best for the section you're working on. At these top corners, you just wanna manipulate the fabric just a little bit to make sure that the lining turns to the inside and keeps that zipper pull where you want it to be. If you're working with a thicker fabric, you can try adding a welt pocket inside for an extra pocket layer. On the left front, which is looking like the right front at the moment while it's inside out, we're gonna just line up against the stitch line on the zipper tape, use it as our guide. And this side you definitely want to hand sew, even if you're not going to do the hand sewing on the other side. This just makes it a little easier to control what's going on. You make sure that the zipper is exactly where you need it and you make sure that the lining isn't going to catch into the zipper when you're pulling it up and down.
just as with the right front, this left front zipper is folded at a right angle and then tucked under the lining and secured. You'll notice I'll have that side just a little lower than the top edge because I don't want it to peek out while it's being worn. So now we have the body of our jacket that's fully lined. We're ready to insert the sleeves. Everything's nice and sewn down. It's a nice clean edge. Our zipper can move freely and is covered. So now to insert the sleeves, you want to run a basting stitch independently around each armhole. Both the lining and the outer shell should be separate from each other. And then because this is a curve and just like the collar, we are going to start clipping around all the curves. Now usually you wouldn't clip under the armhole too much but across the shoulder cap most definitely there is usually a little bit of extra fabric in the sleeve cap than there is in the shoulder cap and that is to allow for the width of the bicep and the shoulder blade to move backward and forward our arms aren't oriented on our bodies quite up and down they're thrown a little forward and so this compensates for that in order to do that though you need to make sure you slash these edges so that they'll spread enough to accommodate the sleeve cap. Again, you're not really supposed to do the underarm half of that, but I still do in situations where I need to find just a little more ease to get my sleeve to fit in there. And now we're gonna turn this body to the inside so the lining is facing out and we're just gonna try to keep the lining out of our way. Here's our sleeve that goes on this side. And I start with the sleeve kind of laying like this because it's a good indication of where the underarm is gonna be. It's about midway underneath here. And then we also have our sleeve cap. So these are gonna have to go together in a funny way. I place the arm kind of here so that I know that the underarms are going to match. I know that the sleeve cap is going to be here and then I flip it just like so. And the top of my sleeve is at the midpoint of where you place the sleeve pocket. So for this I'm using both just the top and the bottom. Generally there would be some notches on front and back to kind of give you an indication. Here you just want to make sure that the cuff is facing the back and we start with the underarm. Now here I'm pinning the lining in too, but we need to get that out of the way. So we're just pinning through the sleeve and its lining and the outer shell of the body of the jacket. This is a little out of frame, but you can imagine it's quite fiddly. So you just wanna do the bottom first, then the top. You can see I'm picking that midpoint of the sleeve pocket. That's my top of my cap right there. That's gonna match up with my shoulder point, which is the seam on the shoulder of the body. So 
So I'm going to pin those two points together. And then what I do is called easing the fullness. So the sleeve cap is always going to be a little bigger than the armhole that you are accommodating it with. The more fabric difference there is, and this can be up to something like two inches, it's kind of difficult to wrap the brain around because how do you, how do you ease so much fabric into a smaller space? But you're really going to kind of press one side to almost gathering like the sleeve cap and stretching the armhole on the other side. So I'm encouraging those splits that I've made, the slits in the seam allowance of the armhole to kind of spread farther apart still. And using those basting stitches again as a guideline, that's your seam line. So using that to match up things makes it a lot cleaner. You end up with a lot less mistakes. And you just wanna make sure that there's no like folded parts or gathers that happen in between these pin points, even though one side is just a little stretch and the other is not. And you work your way around the entire sleeve until you've gotten it pinned into place and happy with its placement, and then we'll sew. Okay, we're ready to sew. We're gonna make sure the lining stays out of the way. We're gonna sew around this armhole. So here the sleeve has been sewn. You can see it's in fully. Now we're gonna turn this out and check our work and make sure that the sleeve sits in the jacket as we expect, that there's no weird peaks or gathers that it seems like it's set okay. And if you're happy with the seam at this point, we can move forward to sewing in the lining around the seam allowance. Here I can see my basting stitches. So anywhere you can see any of your running stitches or basting stitches on the outside, you wanna just take a few minutes to remove them. Having to take them back out should not be a deterrent to using them in the first place. I find them much more valuable as guides than I am annoyed at having to take them out.
One more sleeve and our jacket is going to really come together. We've got the sleeve in here. We've taken out the basting stitches that we could see visibly. And the sleeve cap looks nice and crisp. Once again, checking that seam for any last minute things. This is a section of finishing that a lot of people avoid and it actually adds a lot of professional finished now here with the lining we're gonna do the same thing I'm gonna kind of fold this seam allowance to the inside slash it or notch it as necessary to get it out of your way so it'll lay flat on the armhole and then you're gonna also slash the seam allowance along the uh, lining edge here I am trimming down to a quarter inch to get away or get rid of some of the bulk of the seams. This will also help in place of slashing. You can also pink this seam with a pair of pinking shears, uh, whatever you have. I've only trimmed down that side of the seam. As far as the lining is concerned, I'm going to leave it at the 5 8 that it is. I was trying to save myself some time here by doubling this up so I could slash them at the same time, but be very careful if you're going to do this to make sure that you don't slash through your stitching on the side you can't see. You can see I reverted pretty quickly back to just doing it through a single layer. So now that we're ready to start sewing in the lining, we're going to need to turn the sleeve wrong side out. I'm going to clip these little edges that I didn't clip previously to make sure that they will sit flat on the inside because this curve is a little more extreme than the rest. I'm making these slashes about every inch or so, but you can do whatever works for your project. So here I'm going to grab the sleeve, turn it out towards me so that the seam is easier to work with.
kind of push the seam to the shoulder side, the armhole side. Now I'm starting here on the underarm because that's where the side seam is. It's a good place to hold and hide knots. But I'm going to start by lining up the fold line with my stitch line on the armhole and pinning it together. Somehow my pins are always slightly out of my reach. You can see how on the poly lining that stitch line really is quite effective in creating an immediate fold line, an immediate guide to follow, and makes it a lot less fiddly to deal with.
So as I wrap up pinning this section, you're going to hand sew along the entire edge there, making sure just to catch the lining and not the outside. Removing the pins as you go, and you're done. <laughs>